Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast. And spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blowed his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reach my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to the Confessionals Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. And if you get a hold of me, maybe your story will be featured on a film through Merkel.media. We've done it before with Expedition Dogman and The Shape of Shadows. Those were episodes turned into films. If you want to throw your hat in that ring, you got to start with a contact email at contact at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Also, if you want more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button and become a member. There you get access to the member shows every Thursday. Also, the Tuesday shows ad free and overtime segments when they're available. All there on theconfessionalspodcast.com and the exclusive members app right there on your app store, Google and Apple. Both have those apps available. If you are a member, you can listen to the member episodes right there. And And last last but not least, least, we have empshield.com. That's empshield.com, friends. There you get access to the EMP Shield. If there's a solar flare to an EMP attack, you're going to want these devices on your home and cars. If you're at work and an EMP attack happens, you want to make sure you can get home to your family. And that's where EMP Shield comes in play because they sell devices that connect to your home and vehicle and it will protect you from such attacks. If you go there today, you use coupon code TONY, they will knock $50 off of every device. So if you get one for your house and both vehicles, that's $150 saved. If you just get one, that's $50 saved. So go ahead, check it out. EMPshield.com, coupon code TONY. Now, today we have Gabriel coming on the show, and Gabriel actually connected with me through WhatsApp because he's in Peru. So this is the first time I ever did an interview on WhatsApp. I think it turned out pretty good given the circumstances. He's in Peru, but he served in the United States military. And while he was stationed at Fort Polk in Louisiana, he had a dogman encounter one night while training. He comes on to talk about that today, but it's very interesting how this dog man creature is popping up on military bases. We actually did an episode 475. No, I believe it was 575 where we had a soldier come on the show and talk about his experience on Fort Campbell and how he wasn't the only one that went through this. Many soldiers on Fort Campbell have interacted with dog man to the point that they call it out over the radio. Well, it turns out Fort Polk might be a similar situation because Gabriel comes on today to talk about his situation while training one night and encountering the dog man. So let's get to Gabriel and his experience right now. All right. Today we got Gabriel on the show. Gabriel, how you doing, man? Hey, pretty good, brother. Kind of cold. 
over here, but pretty chill. Hey, man, it's cold everywhere right now for us. Uh, I'm in Tennessee, and it's supposed to, you know, the further south you go, the warmer it is. But the last uh, few days, we've been getting sub 30 degree weather. So it's been chilly for me, too. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, kind of forget from this change of weather. So, okay. Right. So, Listen, you are in Peru right now, and uh, you have had mm -hmm. uh, a pretty interesting encounter when it comes to Dog Man. Uh, you had it while you were in the military here stateside. You have dual citizenship. Uh, where, mm -hmm. where did this encounter happen, and what year did it happen in? It happened in 2010. I was a brand new private out of Fort Knox. My MOS was 19 Delta, was a Cub Scout. Then I went to uh, Fort Bennings to become a, but a trooper. <clears throat> so I was a brand new private. It was my first year in the military. And it happened in July <clears throat> 2010. I remember that because it happened a couple of weeks after, you know, the, the whole 4th of July celebrations that we had. So I, I do remember exactly the month. Um, plus it was pretty freaking hot. Um, Louisiana gets pretty freaking hot. I live in South Florida, <clears throat> but the only difference is in Louisiana, you're surrounded by woods and mosquitoes and snakes and a whole bunch of shit up. <clears throat> yeah, it's a whole different thing, but I, I don't remember. It happened in July, 2010. Wow. Okay. So, uh, let's do this. Let's move into the encounter uh, where, what you were doing, if you guys were doing running drills or you were, you know, on leave, just walk us into this experience that you had with this, this creature. Um, well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say that for 11 years, I thought it was a demon because I never, ever heard the, to the term dog man until 2021. Um, this didn't happen while doing missions inside, for example, inside Fort Polk, there is a massive area that we call the box. Now, just to, you know, disclaimer, what I'm about to say is not violating any sort of Department of Defense, you know, policies, because you can literally Google it and you're going to find it. But yeah, um, inside Fort Paul, there is this massive area that we call the box. This is for training purposes. There is like uh, for rotations, we jump out of airplanes, there is firefights. It is a pretty active area. And that's where the whole encounter happened. <clears throat> and in this specific night, um, my platoon had the task and purpose to go and harass specific because I'm sorry, inside the box there is fake civilian towns there is fake military bases but when there is some sort of rotation you know americans we call it americans or blue force they go in and they you know uh, take over these military bases and also these civilians that we hire to play as you know afghan civilians because at the time the Afghani rota uh, Afghan rotation was an all-time high. So for this specific mission, the main idea was to harass this fake military base that was located northeast in the box. And the idea was to mess up with their sleep because the next day is supposed to be a massive operation in which we're supposed to go and overrun the base and pretty much try to kill everybody inside, you know, for training purposes. <clears throat> um, so for example, the, ta the task and purpose from my platoon was to go do that, harass this military base throughout the night, one in the morning, three in the morning, five in the morning, pretty much just messed up with their sleep <clears throat> and I wasn't the first team I was attached to, to a sergeant at the time I was a PFC was a private first class and I got a sergeant who was an E5 <clears throat> and the main idea was to approach the base from the south we used to drive these beat up trucks and the main idea was to go from the south, 
uh, park the vehicle in a very concealed area, and then we dismount, and then we walk. Um, at the time, my sergeant was carrying a, a M4 carbine, and I was carrying a 240 Bravo machine gun. And if you are brand new in the military, it's a pretty heavy weapon. Eventually, you get used to it, but as a brand new private, I was literally just hating it. Plus, I was carrying like between 100 and 150 rounds of 762 rounds. Um, now, one of the things that I want to make, make it clear is that inside the box, we never use lab ammunition. We use blanks for training purposes, plus, you know, for safety issues. <clears throat> but they're still heavy. They're still heavy. So I do remember we parked the vehicle, we dismount, we start walking. And the area was not was, was not a pretty um, beautiful area to walk through. There was a lot of bushes and holes. And I remember I twisted my ankle like three or four times. Um, my machine gun was getting stuck in every bush, in every, uh, bush and branch you can find. It, it was not a pleasant, you know, uh, situation. And I think it was within maybe 15 minutes into the mission, that's when my sergeant stopped and said, fuck, I forgot my radio. And if you forgot your radio, you lose contact with your chain of command. It's, it's just worse or the same as, you know, forgetting your weapon system. So he was freaking out that we have to go back and get the radio. But like I said, my ankles were like hurting. I was just like, nope. I am not doing that. So my main idea was to say, Sergeant, I can wait for you here and you can, you know, go get the radio. And he kind of like agreed with me in a sense like, yeah, you, you were tripping all over the place. You were making a whole bunch of noise. Yada, yada. Just wait for me here. Just lay in the prone position and I'll be back. Now, <clears throat> when, when, when he say lay in the prone position, when I, I want you to understand an anal analog clock. So you have the 12 o'clock, you have the 6 o'clock. So 12 o'clock is in front of me. 6 o'clock is behind me. My 9 o'clock is my, to my left. My 2 o'clock is to my right. It, that's this important because um, it, all the events that happen during the encounter I related to the sort of vacation, uh, sort of the sort of locations that I was able to pinpoint where things were coming from. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I landed. I, I remember I did like 360 degree area, you know, spot to to find a spot where I can lay down. And one of the main things for me was to hopefully not to lay on top of you know, a uh, fire on the hill because they're pretty freaking nasty. They can literally mess you up the whole freaking day. So luckily, I found a spot. I wasn't able to swim. But like I say, it was around 1, one thirty in the morning. Um, as insurgents, we were not able to have night vision goals. I don't remember what kind of moon we had, but there was some basic illumination coming from the sky. We have the canopy of the trees, so it was pretty goddamn dark. I gotta be honest, I wasn't able to see anything. But when you walk in the middle of the woods by yourself, I'm sorry, in the middle of the night, your eyes get adjusted to the darkness. But I do remember there was some sort of light coming from the sky, so I don't remember what kind of moon we had. But anyway, um, I lay in the prone position, and eventually I could hear my sergeant walking away. Until one point, I wasn't here. I wasn't able to hear no more. And I'm a city guy. And being in the middle of the woods by myself, in the middle of nowhere, it was one of the creepiest feelings I ever had. And I got to prove something clear. You know, at the time, I was a full-blown atheist. I didn't believe in anything. So if you want to talk about religion, I will be the type of person that will literally mock you 
if you want to talk about paranormal things or ghosts or everything, I will be the type of person that will debunk it or keep making fun of it. So in a way, I kept saying in my head, you know, hey, relax. There's nothing going on. Just chill. But I do remember being in the middle of the woods by myself. It was one of the creepiest moments I ever had. <clears throat> um, now that this is when everything started happening. As a city guy, I was not able to understand what was going on, but it's like you flip a switch and all the crickets and all the frogs and cicadas and everything that is all over the, the woods went absolutely quiet. And I was already freaking out by being in the middle of the woods by myself. So now my level of, you know, fear went up tenfold, like, what the hell is going on? Because it was literally, you just flip a switch. It was nothing gradual. It was like, fuck. Um, but, but, like I say, um, I was still atheist. I was still trying to, you know, rationalize it, maybe as the Americans. And it was the Blue Force. Maybe we were there somewhere in the wood line looking at me. But I kept looking at the whole area. I wasn't able to see anything. I wasn't able to hear anything at all. And we were, I think, almost like over two days straightforward with barely any sleep. And the creepy thing is like when you're sleep deprived and you're in the woods, your eyes start playing tricks on you. I do remember seeing shadows, you know, left and right, you know, footsteps. But it's, it's just your brain, you know, messing with your head. But still, I was not able to see actually what I was expecting to see. A platoon of soldiers coming from that area that were supposed to go and attack. And I was really like, my, my anxiety level kept going up and up and up. And and now this is when the other weird thing happened. I don't know if it's related to my experience, but I want to say it because it happened within, you know, the timeline. Uh, to my 10 o'clock, almost like 100 yards away, which is kind of like 300 feet away, I noticed uh, a red light. I wasn't able to see the actual source, but it was very low to the ground. And it was pulsating. Now, in the military, we have flashlights, we have headlamps, and most of the you know the sort of systems have three type of settings. You had the low beam, you had the high beam, and you had the strobe. But this thing was pulsating. When I was able to notice it in the corner of my eyes, it was very dim and they got very bright. Like a dimmed again got really bright and it just disappear. But again, um, I was trying to explain it away. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe special forces guys making a mistake, you know, turning a flashlight on something. But I wasn't able to hear anything or see anything. Um, and that's when I hear something to my seven o'clock. And when I kind of turn, uh, I noticed this this little bush that I noticed it before, but there was something very black that was behind it, and it was protruding from the right side of it. It was pitch black, and it looked like a boulder, something that I don't know. I I, I don't remember seeing that because before my sergeant left. I did a 360 degrees of my environment to see, you know, where I can lay down and find a concealed area or with some cover. But I didn't remember seeing that boulder. And um, I kind of freaked out again. But again, I was trying to rationalize. I, maybe it's, you know, the Americans. Maybe, I don't know, Navy SEALs snuck up on me or something. I was a brand new private. I was not able to understand how tactics work. So I kind of freaked out. Um, I was laying in the prone position, like I said, pointed to my 12 o'clock. Now, if you look at a picture of the 240 Bravo, 
uh, the bottom of the barrel looks like a handle. Okay, so what I did is I grabbed the handle with my right hand. I got in my right knee. I got the bump stock with my right hand, and I kind of twist my whole body towards that direction. Because I'm thinking, well, this is the Americans. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go down without a fight. <clears throat> so when I switch to that direction, <clears throat> um, that's when the thing got in four legs. Now I don't know if Dogman has the capacity to self illuminate their eyes or he had, he had his eyes closed because while he was racing in four legs, maybe like a one third of the way, that's when the eyes lit up. It's like a flashlight, which is one of the most insane things that you can see. Um, and it was keep racing. It was racing, racing, racing <clears throat> until we were almost to eye to eye level. Um, I got it to 40 Bravo, like I said, on my right knee, but I was not crunching over it. I was just putting in the ground, you know, to you know, to face what I thought was my enemy. And at one point, this thing got it over this little, br um, little brush, <clears throat> and we were almost eye to eye level. And this thing was literally over four and a half or five feet tall when you got in four legs. And then my brain got into just like this, you know, Windows Vista mode. Like I was not able to process anything. But at one point I was like, it, what, what am I looking at? Is this a bear? Now, um, before you go into any military base, you get a lot of briefings about, you know, we're supposed to get your uniforms, locations, things that matter to you. And one of the briefings in Fort Polk is related to the wildlife that happened in Louisiana because you're in the middle of the woods. And the main thing is don't fuck with the wildlife. Um, they talk about you know, brown reclusive, it's a pretty nasty spider, a um, couple of snakes, wild hogs, but they also talk about black bears. Um, black bears are not uh, observed like too often inside the box because it's a pretty loud area and animals usually just stay away from you know that sort of drama. But I know for a fact that there is black bears in Louisiana. <clears throat> So at one point I was looking at this thing and my brain was trying to think, is this a black bear? Because I never seen a black bear face to face, especially at night. And also I never seen those like yellow amber eyes that were like, <clears throat> once you see those eyes, you never forget about it, brother. You never forget about those eyes. And the main thing is you can able to see the pupils. It's like, I don't know, like, they, they have some sort of power source behind the eyes. I don't want to say, you know, power source, but that's what it felt. Because the pupils were really noticeable. <clears throat> and when I was looking at that, what I thought was a bear, I was like, them freaking out at one point. And... I do remember one guy had some sort of encounter with a bear somewhere, I think it was in Mississippi. And he said, if, if you encounter mostly black bear, um, try to get yourself bigger and louder. And hopefully this animal will just run away. Unless it's hungry or it's mob a mom with cops. Uh, in that kind of case, you're literally screwed. <clears throat> but I do remember that that this guy was saying you know try to make yourself bigger and louder and like I said I have a I have a machine gun a 240 brow machine gun you can google that it's a massive weapon but it's filled with blanks <clears throat> and the only thing I got in my pocket <clears throat> was a four inch blade so now going back to 
what a lot of people repeat in the military is you know the fight or flight type of situations. I knew for a fact that I would not I was not able went to flight. And I was not able to go and outrun a bird. So my only you know option was to hopefully you know get into feet, put it to 40 Bravo count on my right side, kind of rumble style, and just start blast in the whole area. Because it's a pretty loud weapon. We're talking about 762 caliber. <clears throat> and it's a full, you know, full automatic machine gun, you know. Um, so that's what I thought. I want to stand up, get into feet, pull the 240 brow to my right side, kind of like a Arnold Schwarzenegger, Roman style, and start blasting the whole area in the hopes that this animal will just go away. But that's not what happened. Um, when, when I was able to stand up, I got the two photo bra to my right side. I do remember putting my finger in the right side of the weapon to switch from safe to fire and I start blasting the whole area. And <clears throat> that's when I hear one of the most insane sounds ever. Imagine a lion's roar multiplied by 10, but the base of it drop is so freaking low that it's going to vibrate every internal or organ inside your body. That's what I felt. And I just don't know if they do it on purpose to freeze or prey because I was completely frozen. I don't know it's based on fear, which is that's the way they do it, but I was completely frozen to the point that I said my finger was literally just right next to the lever to switch from safe to fire, but I was frozen. The only thing I do remember is feeling my legs that were getting very, very weak, like I was about to pass out. I don't remember feeling my heart or anything else. It's just my legs that I was, you know, was about to pass down. <clears throat> and uh, that's when the thing stood up. And when it did that, it was very, very smooth. I didn't hear any popping sounds, nothing like that. It was very smooth. It's like it didn't have any sort of trouble just getting into legs. It was very slow, very methodical, and it was staring at me, staring at my, staring at my eyes. Um, and when it was done, standing up in two legs, it was, I'm six feet tall, and this thing was way over eight feet tall. And at one point, through, through the illumination that happened in the moon, that happened in the background, I was able to see, you know, from shoulder to shoulder, the thing was just massive. And that's when I was able to see the horns. Well, at a time, I thought of horns, but I know there was the eye, the, the ears, they were very pointy ears. I was able to notice a little bit of the, the wet nose. But the main thing is, like, why don't you see those eyes, brother? You never forget them. Those yellow amber eyes and there, there there's there's three main things that i got after seeing those eyes first of all there was something that it was very nefarious it was not friendly it was evil that's why for 11 years i thought it was a demon <clears throat> and the intelligence like this thing can literally look through you and I don't know, it started you from head to toe. And the last thing is like what I was seeing is it was something that is ancient, that has been around for a very, a very long time. I really don't know what they are, but I can tell you one thing. We're not dealing with an animal. And I think the main thing that got me was just the evil that I felt in those eyes. 
And that's when I notice I, I pee my pants. I start feeling this war sensation coming down my legs. And I don't know if it's made out of fear, or just I was just confused about the whole situation, but yeah, I pee my pants. And when I pee my pants, this thing, they just like twice, like <laughs> that was male. And then that's when I was able to see the full set of teeth. Now, when, uh, when I saw the full set of teeth, I was expecting to hear some sort of like a growl or snarl something, but I didn't hear anything. But throughout these, these years and all the interviews that I was able to hear from other people um, and how nasty these things can be, I'm 100% sure, I'm 100% sure that this sucker was laughing at me. He smelled that up in my pants. And he was just loving it. He smiled that I pee my pants. Um, <clears throat> that's when it looks to its right. And when it did that, that's when I was able to see this snout, this sort of canine snout. It was very noticeable, but I was able to see it. It was not like a long face, you know, like all the animals have. It was very slow the way it looked to its right. And when it did that, I see this um, thing that what lions have, this big ass hair around their neck, but it was not that big, but you can tell that it was something that was very hairy around their neck. And again, my brain was still going in, you know, Windows Vista. I was not able to understand what the hell was doing. <clears throat> um, then he looked back at me. It was very slow. The problem is, like, if you see how slow it turned, how slow it looked back at me, it was just one of the things that also I was never going to forget. He looked back at me, he smiled again, and that's when he switched his body towards his left. Now, when, when, when he moved his body towards his left, it was not just like, a, you know, I'm going to look left and then my whole body, no. It looked like something we do in the military. It, it looked like he, he did on a left face. It's something that you 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 turn and you know the ball of your feet and your entire body moves towards one direction one single time. Uh, this thing was behind this bush, so I was not able to see from the waist down, but from the upper body and the head, it was just one single motion that it turned towards you know, towards the left. And when he did that, I was like, please just go. Please just go away. Um, and that's when he crouched down a little bit. And I was expecting to, to see this thing go up four legs. And that's when he did the other amazing thing. He jumped in the air, maybe... 10, 15 feet up in the air, and he landed over 20, 25 feet towards the left. And you can tell this thing was heavy, but it was very tactical. So when he landed, it was not like a massive sound that you can hear like a boom, you know? It landed, but you can hear that this thing had a mass, but it was able to continue running in one single movement. It's like, uh, I explained somebody like, you know, when you, somebody said, you know, I hear the floor running. That's what he did. He jumped. And when he landed, it was just one single movement and continued running. And this thing was heavy. You can tell it was very, very heavy because he was moving through the woods like it was just didn't care about anything. <laughs> Time for this episode's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered to your doorstep, eliminating the need for trips to the grocery store and making home cooking easy, enjoyable, and budget friendly, which is why it's the leading meal kit in America. The holiday season, the most wonderful time of the year, becomes even more delightful with HelloFresh. You can choose 
from a selection of over 45 weekly recipes and explore more than 100 curated options from HelloFresh Market. But HelloFresh isn't just about dinner. It's a solution for hassle-free meal occasions, whether it's easy breakfast, quick lunches, or snacks. HelloFresh delivers it all with your weekly box. We've been loyal HelloFresh customers for years, and there's no looking back. Thanks to HelloFresh, my wife, Lindsay, doesn't waste time pondering what to prepare for dinner, hunting down recipes and ingredients, and making grocery store trips. Everything arrives proportioned at our front door, consistently punctual and consistently delicious. Go to HelloFresh.com slash confessionals free and use code confessionals free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash confessionals free with code confessionals free. At one point when it was actually living the area, I was not able to actually see it no more. I hear like a sound, like a tree falling. Um, at the time, I didn't know what that was. But, you know, through all this time, hearing different stories and understanding how strong these things can be, I'm 99% sure that the thing was literally just going in that direction. There was a tree in front of him. He just pushed it out of the way. Because it was a tree that was falling. It was not a small tree. It was very heavy. You can hear like the whole thing like boom. <clears throat> and that's what I think happened. The thing was just running in that direction towards this little tree and they just push it out of the way like it was nothing. Um, <clears throat> that's when I hear something towards my left. And I'm, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. After that happened, I remember still looking at the ground in front of me and I started shaking my head because I, wanna, I wanted to wake myself up. I really thought it was in some sort of dream or something. I was shaking my head, like left to right, but nothing was happening. But the, the thing is just everything around me felt kind of weird, felt like a dream. I wish I could, I was able to, to give you details, explain how it felt, but I literally felt like it was some sort of dream. And I remember looking at the ground and started shaking my head left and right, <clears throat> trying to wake myself up. And that's when I hear something to my left. And when I hear something to my left, my entire body freaked out and I move, switch my whole body, pointing my weapon towards that direction because I didn't know what I was, you know, expecting. So, but I was still in the kind of sense of just very very scared very terrified of what i saw and eventually i was able to see a, sh a shadow then i was able to see a shape and then i realized it was my sergeant but i was still kind of i was still kind of like in a frozen situation and when it comes to muscle discipline you know you don't point your weapon at nobody and i was literally just frozen pointing this you know machine gun at my sergeant and he was, while he was approaching me, he was like, kind of like whispering, cursing, like, what the hell are you doing, you private piece of shit, you know? <clears throat> and when he got close enough, he actually slapped the barrel away from him. He was still cursing me. And me, my broken English, as a sergeant, I, th I think I saw a bear in the run. And he was like, you need to get your shit together. It was probably a horse. We gotta go. And when he said the word horse, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, there is there is a briefings that we had in Fort Paul that there is a lot of wild horses in Louisiana. Horses are big. They can stand them to legs. They can jump, they can run. So it was kind of like a, a moment of clarity thinking, Oh my God, it was just a horse, the thing that I saw. I was just kind of terrified for the whole thing about being by myself in the middle of the woods. The woods went quiet and, you know, the whole situation that I probably thought that I saw a demon. But it literally in the back of my head went like, no, it was a horse. I'm 100%. And he said, you know, I hear it. I hear it. So he hears the thing moving. Because, like I say, it was very loud, but it was tactical in a way. So I know he heard it. 
And I was like, holy crap, it was just a horse. It was just a horse. And he was kind of freaking out. First of all, you know, he found this dumb private flag in him with this 240 Bravo machine gun. And I'm pretty sure he was getting his ass chewed up because he forgot his radio by my platoon sergeant. So he was like, we got to go. We're kind of late. So that's what, that's what we did, you know. We went to finish the mission. We went back um, to the truck. Then we actually ended up meeting up to a rally point where our platoon was. And I remember he made a complaint about you know, this stupid private. and He was flagging me. And, you know, he made me do like 30 pushes or something. But he was getting his ass chewed up because he forgot he's ready to. But I, at, at that time, like I said, my brain was going back to, I just saw a horse. Now, four days later, I was able to go back to the barracks. Um, they gave me like a three days, I'm sorry, three hours just to go and eat something. Like a hot chow because when you're in the field, the only thing you eat is MREs. So, you know, I went to my room, got a Coca Cola, and got some eggs and stuff. But back in 2010, Facebook was an all time high. So, one of the main things that I did was just log in my computer and try to see, you know, what my friends were doing <clears throat> and everything like that. And I'm going to send you, the, I got a, I got a, um, a wallpaper. That is pretty cool. You can see these horses, wild horses running in, you know, in the drop zone in Fort Polk, and you can see the paratroopers, you know, landing from the top. And when I turned the computer on, I remember watching the in the wall screen, and that's when the thing that I remember, you know, the horses got these long faces. They don't have this snout that that I know what I saw. And I got in kind of like this kind of like freaky moment, like, what the hell did I look? <clears throat> what the hell, did, you know, was the scene that I watched that night? And I started looking at pictures of, you know, horses and eye shine and the way they move. And there was nothing, absolutely nothing close to, to what I thought the thing that moved that night. So I, I went back to the home. Maybe it was just some sort of like a, like a demon. And it was something that was scaring me for a while because as an atheist, you know, I'm kind of familiar with, you know, the way people talk when it comes to, you know, demon possessions and stuff because, you know, you want to debunk, you want to explain things away. And by the time my brain was already 180 degrees change. So the main thing for me was like expecting to see shadows in my room, getting scratched, but nothing happened. The only thing that was, it was very constant was like a nightmare that I had from like a week and a half. I was running through the woods. It was something chasing me. And when I looked back, there was nothing. And then I heard like a, like a hand and it would push me so hard that my face will hit the ground. And that's when I would wake up. But other than that, I never, you know, I never see any sort of shadow. I never had a sort of scratch or anything. So for for a while, I started to think that maybe there was something that was localized, that maybe I was very close to a Native American burial ground or something. To the point that I actually asked to one of the to, to one of the sergeants, you know, a sergeant, you know, in this sort of the boss, you know, this is sort of like a Native American burial ground or something. He explained to me that no, that cannot be the case. Because if that was the case, the whole area would be off limits. We're not able to even close near that area for, you know, because it's a, it's a secret area and and there's a lot of regulations when it comes to approaching things that are Native Americans in that kind of room. And he kind of like jokingly, he said, what, do you saw the box witch? And it was like, what the hell is a box witch? And I realized there is a lore inside about these apparently these women that before the army decided to take over this land um, decided to you know move this whole bunch of people away from the area to you know to make the base and there's this lady that decided you know, she didn't want to move 
and she decided, you know, she committed suicide. And, you know, that's that's one of the laws that, that happened in Fort Paul, you know, that these women, that, you know, dressed in white, you know, the classic thing, and then just goes around and scaring soldiers once in a while. I met somebody that he saw her up and down, that he saw her, but it, it, it is a lore. But the thing was, <clears throat> he was kind of like making a, making fun of me. Oh, you saw the box with yada yada. He just walked away. And after that, I never, I never told any anything to anybody. Because one of the main things when you're in the army, you don't want to say, "Hey, I'm seeing ghosts, I'm seeing demons," because you know you came, uh, you know, sent into a different area, or you're gonna be that guy. <clears throat> then they're gonna trust you. So. I just stayed quiet. I've left the army in 2014. And then I didn't know what it was until 2021 when I saw this show called This Woods Are Hunted. And it was in season two, episode one. And with these two brothers and a friend that were fishing in Texas. And they saw the thing, you know. And that's the first time that I heard the term dogman. And after that, I've been just literally obsessed with it. I have three tattoos with, you know, one is the wolf, then I have Anubis in a couple other areas, but I don't think it's Anubis, but I'm, I'm, I'm just completely fascinated by the thing, like to the point that I want to see it again. Um, there is this guy that I know in Florida, he lives in Ocala. And he explained to me that there is, you know, this family member that he sees, you know, Dogman once in a while. It's, there's no harassment. There's no, you know, he doesn't attack the chickens or anything. He just showed up and he just sit there and, the, you know, by the edge of the woods and just look at them. But you can tell this thing, she, the lady says, just, this thing is just massive. It's like a wolf three times bigger. <clears throat> and next year, Hopefully we can go back and I can go back to, to, to Florida and probably just go and, you know, look them up. <laughs> because um, there is not a single day that I don't think about this. Other. Not a single day, brother. And that's my story, man. I was a full-blown atheist. Um, born in Peru. And... My life got switched 180 degrees from that encounter in 2010, in which for 11 years or so it was a demon, until I came across a turn document in 2021. That's wild, man. That's really wild. So uh, the the fact that you had this encounter and you thought it was a demon uh, for so long, it turns you away from being an atheist. Uh, how, how are you now? I mean... It, do you think that this is still a, a like a demon dog type of entity, or do no. you think it's much more physical? No, brother. There is no. I mean, for example, for eleven years, the whole thing switched me towards being very um, open-minded towards the paranormal. Because here's the thing: when you're an atheist, you 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 live in this little bubble, in which, for example, all the people that believe in religion, they're crazy. The people that have paranormal experiences that are also, you know, kind of crazy. And you have the you create this sort of ego in which you 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 pretend that you're part of this special group that you know you know the truth. So seeing what I saw that night, it, it opened my mind to the possibility of things, you know, maybe there are things out there that we don't know. But at that time I thought it was a demon. So I was really obsessed with the whole concept of ghosts and the paranormal and demons. But I never ever heard about the document until 2021, and now through all these years of you know doing my basic investigation stuff, I realized that um, there is not something demonic, but it is definitely not not an animal. It's definitely not an animal. I just don't know what it is, but it's definitely not an animal, brother. So it's almost like in your mind, it's it's its own creature. It's its own creature. It's not an animal. It's not a demon. It's its own thing. I, I wish I knew, you know, how can I actually get into the details of it, but I think it kind of goes to the same concept with Bigfoot. Um, like, it, 
the Bigfoot, I mean, for me, I never believed in Bigfoot before that. And then I started thinking that maybe it's just an unclassified type of primate. But here's the thing, you know, when, when it comes to Bigfoot, at least we have uh, archaeological, you know, uh, things that, you know, the giant pedicles. And, and it comes with document, there's nothing like that. There is not a canine that can walk on two legs and and do the things they do. And I mean, I... I, I I hear some crazy stories about people talk about mind speak or things like that. I never, I, I didn't hear that. I never, you know, experienced any thought of that. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's something, something else. I just don't know what it is, brother. And the, but I, the, we're not dealing with an animal. I'm 100 percent sure it's the same with Bigfoot. We're not dealing with a, with an unclassified gorilla. We're dealing with something else. What do you think about the idea of it being some kind of interdimensional creature that manifests here in this realm? Well, at the point we're just right now, we're dealing with conclusions. We don't have any sort of physical evidence. I, I think the only way we can probably not close the case, but kind of like have an answer is you, you can get like a body and try to study it. But I just don't know what it is, brother. But I remember what I saw in those eyes. It was, it was something very ancient. The thing is not just like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like a, some sort of canine that's taped out of, you know, out of some sort of nuclear facility. No, no, this is something very, very ancient. It's been, it's been with us for a very, very long time. I just, I just don't know what it is. So you think that we can kill it? No. Not no. at all? Okay. I definitely think, no. I don't think we can kill it. There's something, there's something, something else about him, brother. I just don't know. I wish I can explain it, but we're not dealing with an animal. It's definitely not an animal. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not an animal, not a demon. I just don't know. But there's something more complex about those two, including, you know, Big probably to a dark man is, is more nefarious. There's something very nasty about him. Very, very nasty. Have you uh, talked to people within the military about this experience you've had? No. The only time that I, that I talk about was just when asking about the whole Native American bearing ground. And that's it. But I never actually brought that shit up again because you don't want to be that guy, you know, talking about, you know, demons and stuff. So I, I just keep it quiet for 11 years. I never talked to nobody. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and so it, we, on that note, then I'm assuming you've never heard of anybody else encountering this creature or whatever it is at Fort Polk. Yeah. No, the only thing I hear is about the box, witch. you know, this sort of lady that hunts the woods, but I mean, I'm pretty sure there is somebody that saw it, but, uh, they, they, they don't talk about it. The only thing I remember hearing is about this, this guy, the, um, he, he he had his brother. He he lives in Louisiana, okay. And they, you know, in, inside his house, he has this like massive like um uh, um how do you call it? like when you lock doors like um, um metal metal type of locks that you lock the doors from the inside out. But he had it from the inside. out out so he doesn't have the things outside and then the main thing that i remember is about when you know this this person was talking about you know these these two guys that were like these two brothers they the two brothers had an encounter one of the brothers left this rural area and he went to live to alexandria and the other guy left because you know he was kind of like for uh, i guess financial issues he wasn't able to leave that place but he actually was explaining about this experience that he had when uh, he he was <clears throat> I'm sorry he was hunting and he saw this massive dog just staring at him and he didn't pay attention to the dog but I guess the thing followed him to the point that one night he was sleeping and then he was hearing like tapping noises in the window and when he woke up he saw these like red eyes the windows and when this thing was able to notice that this thing was you know being observed it tapped it one more time but it was so hard it actually cracked the whole window and just disappeared and this person doesn't go out at night alone and 
they show me some pictures of this guy, you know, when he was growing up. He was the sort of type of hunter, you know, Louisiana type of guy hunting, you know, deer, you know, raccoon, you know, coon hunting, whatever. But now he hasn't gone on at all. So I, as far as I know, I know probably there is people that saw it, but they just don't, don't talk about it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I know a lot of people have these experiences and they don't want to talk about it. I've talked to enough people, you know, that are finally talking after years of, you know, the experience, even you, I mean, you, you had the experience in 2010 and you're just now starting to talk about it. So, uh, there's definitely the possibility, the likelihood that other people have had the encounter as well. Um, have you ever heard of Fort Campbell in Kentucky and Tennessee? No, no, no. I, I hear about those bases, but I never hear in the sort of like a encounters. The only thing I hear about, I think it was Fort Campbell was like a Bigfoot. But I, it was kind of like a, sort of like a sort of like a you know somebody was talking some some drunken you know night. Uh, yeah, somebody saw like this big as gorilla in Fort Campbell, but literally going to details something like you know explained probably was Bigfoot. I don't know, no, because you you don't talk about that kind of thing in the military. It's kind of like you don't want to go, you know, when you don't want to be that guy, you know. No, I can understand that. I, I think the culture is different on Fort Campbell, to be honest with you, because. Um, Apparently, so I had a, a soldier on, uh, I think it was a member's episode. I, it was, uh, I called it the siege of Fort Campbell, dogman siege of Fort Campbell. Uh, I think it's a uh, 575 is the episode. I think it's a member. I know it's a member show. And um, I had a soldier come on and he told me about his interactions with this creature on Fort Campbell. And uh, then he relayed another story. And, and when with his story, I mean, like, the word dog man was called out over the radio. Uh, it was something that it, it, it's, it was talked about amongst the soldiers. They, they train on the back 40. It's like 40 acre property that uh, they train on. I think it's 40 acres. They call it the back 40. And that's where these experiences are coming in from. And uh, he even relayed a story of how there was... He wasn't present for this as far as the, the the location, but it came in over the radio as it was happening. And uh, essentially, there's this interaction with this creature, and one of the soldiers wound up getting pulled into the bushes, and they had to pull the guy back, and he was injured from the yeah. he was injured from the experience. Um, and he heard it happen and unfold over the radio. Uh, and what was interesting about this whole thing is that, uh, I, you know, I'm talking to this one guy and I'm not even going to say his name because I, I know on video he wanted his face blurred out. So I'm pretty sure we didn't use his real name and I don't remember what the fake name was. But um, in the we I was in a, ch a, a chat thread with him and three other soldiers from Fort Campbell and all four sa soldiers were uh, had involvement that night during that experience. And they all had their own perspectives and vantage points. And one of the soldiers in the chat thread that I was in was the guy who uh, was involved in pulling the soldier back to safety from this creature pulling him in. Uh, of, the th of, well, of the four soldiers in this chat thread, only one was willing to talk to me on air live. So it kind of goes into um, your your claim that it's like, this is something we don't really want to talk about. Uh on Fort Campbell, though, I, I from what I understand and have been told through this guy, this is something that's such a common occurrence that it really seems like they don't have a choice but to talk about it. Uh, it, it. It happens often. And this area, I mean, Fort Campbell isn't far from a place called Land Between the Lakes. It's uh, shortened to be LBL, which has tons of dogman activity. Uh, there's a family that, that was massacred by one of these creatures, uh, supposedly. Uh, a long time mm -hmm. ago, but um, yeah, these these creatures are definitely out there, and uh, it's interesting that you say that it's not an animal, it's not a demon, because there's in in most circles, it's hard. It, it, people are either going to qual qualify it as a physical animal or a spiritual demon type creature. You say it's not either one of those. Do you? It, it sounds like you no, no, have. No. Go ahead. What, what, what I say for what what I saw that night was something very physical. It was heavy as fuck. 
when it landed and the whole thing, you can tell the thing was just literally moving. It was not just like a shadow. And also what I saw through those eyes was something very, very nasty. So these things have something against humanity. I don't know what it is, but I do know that's not just, you know, classified was, you know, a demon, you know, tried to possess my soul or something. But it was it was very physical. When I when he jumped, when he landed, it was it was very physical, brother. So I don't know if like I said, you know, probably they have some sort of ability to switch from one dimension to another. I just don't know. I don't understand how that works. But it was very physical. The way it landed and the way it ran, it was very, very heavy. Well, uh, let me tell you how the switching from dimension to dimension works. I totally understand it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I don't st- understand it at all. Uh, but that's kind of the direction I was going with it because I know you said that it was very physical, but you don't you don't believe it's an animal and you don't believe it's a demon, uh, which is no. yep. which is interesting because uh, I have been exploring this very idea for quite a while now that these beings these creatures whatever they are are interdimensional uh i do believe that i don't believe all of them are i I, like the ones that i think because i do believe that humans are creating these things as well through alchemical means but uh i think that these creatures like say the one you saw maybe i believe that these things can be interdimensional and uh, what does that even mean? Like, what are they? You know, we can go into the idea of um, going back to, you mentioned ancient times and the the how old these things are. Could they be a remnant of like biblical times of the Nephilim? I don't know. Yeah, no, there's one thing I, I, I can be honest about it. Like, I know what I saw in those eyes. It was something that was very, very ancient. It's not just like an animal that escaped from a nuclear facility. It's something very variation because what i saw in those eyes was just it was wisdom it was not just the evilness it was just a wisdom the things have been around for a very very long time yeah and that that's the fact that you say that and you got that vibe from from this encounter uh really plays into um a lot of different things i I, there's i'm working on some things and and i i think that when i release certain stories uh, it, it might play into what you're saying a lot. Um, basically, interdimensionalism, Nephilim, accessing other realms, uh, creating, you know, creatures. Uh, it, it's very, it's a very interesting and complex uh, road to go down. And uh, I, I don't say, I, I don't think I have the answers. I don't think many people do, if any, have answers. But I think one of the best things we do as human beings that are encountering weird things is uh, we talk about it. The more we talk about it, the more we're going to be able to draw conclusions and and further our thought processes. And people, I, I have people who have said in the past, like, you know, we're mouth to mouth, you know, people sharing their experiences are the most unreliable um, ways to understand topics. And I, I just don't agree with that at all. Uh, especially when it comes to the mysterious side of things, these creatures, uh, hauntings, UFOs, aliens, all that stuff. Like, um, it, it's the people's experience that gets the conversation going to begin with. And I can understand, like, you can try diving into uh, the theoretical realm of, you know, trying to understand things scientifically and all that stuff. But your science and your understanding through science begins at somebody's encounter story with these things. And uh, I think we can yeah. really gain knowledge and understanding through having people share their experiences. And people's experiences aren't the same from one to another. And I think that's one of the, the biggest things that historically people get caught up on, especially as you know, podcast hosts. You know, it, it, it's very easy as a podcast host to try to get boxed into one line of thinking and, say, and it could be because you're trying to solve the mystery of whatever you're looking into. Mm-hmm. It's very important, I think, for for us podcasters that dive into these things to just allow people's experiences to unfold on on your show uh, organically and not not always try to connect it to what you've heard before that made sense to you before, because these things yeah. are very mysterious for a reason. The, it's a mystery, 
And we need to let the details unfold because that's why I come to the conclusion that there's a lot of properties that these things hold that just don't make sense. But you can't, there, it's, these things are not just one thing in my mind. Uh, it's not just a physical creature. It's not just a demonic entity. It's not just an interdimensional being. It's not just something that's created in a lab. I think it, it, it's, it's very complex. And uh, the more we let people like you just share your story, even if it doesn't match towards what other people think it is or what I think it is, just to let you share the story, I think we can really gain a lot of information that way. Yeah, that, that's true, brother. That's what I'm saying. You know, uh, I'm still skeptical, but when you talk about interdimensional things, um, remember, there was this red light that showed up out of nowhere to my 10 o'clock. And right after that happened, that's when I saw this freaking thing. So I don't know if I had anything to do with it, but it, the fact that it just happened within seconds that I saw this pulsating red light and seconds later to my cell by the cloud, I just saw this black thing just hiding behind this bush. Um, I just don't know. I'm very open-minded to the old possibilities, but I'm 100% sure one thing is we're not dealing with an animal. No, I don't think we're dealing with an animal at all. Um, and no. the red light is interesting too because I told you how uh, I think you and I had just connected and uh, I told you how I had an interview before yours and uh, I was talking to the guy about uh, his experiences and stuff. And the idea of Dogman came up. He's not sure exactly what he experienced. Uh, it seems like it might have been even more of a shapeshifter than anything. Uh, but, you know, Dogman, could it be, you know, a skinwalker, somebody who's transforming their body? Uh, but one thing that he said, one thing that he said was that uh, during his encounter with this thing, he saw off in the distance these two red lights that he perceived as red eyes, red glowing eyes looking at him during his encounter with this creature. And, um, you know, maybe maybe it has some kind of connection to, to your story. You know, maybe there there is this no, no, the, red the, the red light that I saw, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the red light that I saw it was big. It was like, a, it's like, you know, I don't know, so, so like um, um, somebody was lighting a fire it was it was very noticeable. I wasn't able to see the source of it, but it was the way it was shining around the trees and the bushes. It was not just a couple of eyes. It was very noticeable. It was something that caught my attention to the thought to the point that I thought, you know, like who is in the military so, you know, careless to just, you know, lit up, you know, that's a massive uh flashlight in the middle of the woods. Yeah, especially when we're doing in the middle of the rotation or a tactical thing situation but it, it was not just like a couple of eyes it was just a very very bright red light interesting uh so the thing is, I, never, I never heard anything i never smell anything but it was just the whole thing it was just so bizarre that happened within the seconds uh i just don't know brother it, it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird you know like i'm 43 years old and i think monsters exist <laughs> i just don't know <laughs> I'm like kind of bizarre thing, you know, like, but, but, you know, I know what I saw and I'm 43 years old and I don't give a damn what people think. I know what I saw. And the good thing is I know the other people saw the same thing. Yeah. No, I, listen, man, I'm, I'm 38. I just turned 38 last week and, uh, yeah, I believe monsters. I haven't even, I haven't even seen a monster and I, I, I've heard monsters. I think monsters exist and, you know, it's a, it's an uncomfortable conversation when my son, you know, seeking, seeking, uh, uh, advice and, and, and comfort and security. And he's like, daddy, do monsters exist? Cause he wants me to say no. And I'm just like, yes, sucker. Monsters exist. No, <laughs> I don't say oh, that. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to go that route because I don't, and if I told you about the, the, the other, I don't know if it was an experience about a ghost or something, but I, I don't know if I told you about this, another experience that I have when I was in football too, it was pretty short. Don't worry, it's not going to take too much time. It was like when we we have the barracks, and then when if you don't have a car, if you cross towards this area that is a wooden area, when you come out of the other side, you're going to find what is called the PX, with the commissary. The commissary is when you buy your, your, your products, your food, whatever. The PX is kind of like a Walmart type of thing. 
you got your classics where, you know, a whole bunch of alcohol because in the military, we're literally just like a high functioning alcoholics. And there is this area that I was walking one time. It, it was it was kind of dark. It was almost like 5.30 in the afternoon. And I was walking through it and it was like a wooden bridge. And when I was halfway through it, I hear something to my right. And I look and there was nothing. And when I was about to finish crossing the bridge, I hear something. It was it was way more louder. And now, the the thing that caught my attention was it was because I was able to fixate in one specific point. Because if if, if I didn't actually see that point, I was I was not able to notice it ever. And the, it was this little branch that came out of this tree, but it, it looked like somebody cut it. And then glue it, but he did it the fucked up way. It was not the perfect, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it was like a couple of inches up. It's like when you put a pencil in water, you notice that sort of like a uh, visual, um, um, you know, the reflection that you can see that something is broken. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I saw. It was just a little branch that was coming out of this tree. And it's, it looked like somebody cut it, and it glued it the wrong way, and then ten inches towards the left, it happened the same thing. It, it, it seems like somebody cut it and they glued it the wrong way. So I was kind of like confused about it because this thing was literally almost like five feet away from me, just right there because um, it was very noticeable because I was able to see it right away. And now when I was looking at it. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something else move. It was like a piece of glass. It was like something that was a piece of glass. It just moved. And I freaked the fuck out and I just run. So I don't know if it was a ghost or something cloaking, but I noticed there was something there that was literally just right next to me. But the way it moved when out of the corner of my eye was something that was very big. It was very big. Till the day, I don't know what it was. And that happened on Fork Polk, right? Yes, it was 2014. That's actually before I left the military. Well, I was crossing that area before to go to the commissary because I was planning to go to buy some food and stuff. But, you know, I freaked the fuck out so so bad that after I was done buying, I ended up by, you know, calling a cab to go back to the barracks. But it was something so bizarre, like I say, it's like it's a little branch that somebody cut it and glue it, fucked it up in their own way that is not, you know, aligned perfectly. And then 10 millimeter, 10 centimeters later, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to the left, you notice the same thing, phenomenon. And then out of the corner of your eye, you see something like a glass. Um, some people talk about the whole predator type of phenomenon. That's not what I saw. It looked like a glass. It was very transparent. You were never to notice it, what it was, but it was something that moved. And I freaked out and I just ran out of there. But the, until today, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a ghost or something. <laughs> I just don't know, bro. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's interesting. And, you know, it kind of kind of heads into the direction that, you know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I believe this or, or even think about it a whole lot, but it is a thought to be had that, uh, military bases being strategically located in areas that have paranormal supernatural activity in them, uh, either to hide those areas from the public, to study it, to take advantage of it. I'm not sure, but I mean, uh, Nick from Tales of the Grid Square uh, on Instagram, he's documented thousands of cases of weird phenomenon happening on military bases like 29 Palms, Fort Campbell. He's the one who organized the whole uh, episode 575 for me and those soldiers. Um, then there's you know Fort Polk like you. It seems like maybe these areas might have uh, dimensional shift type things happening that allows this activity to happen for people like you, even though you weren't looking for it. Um, does that sound like something that's too far fetched for you? No, no. The, the only thing I got to disagree in the fact that I think it's just military literally. I think it's just, they're all over the place. You know, unfortunately you know, the problem is military bases are not small brother are massive. We're talking about, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of course miles of, of terrain and, and, you know, uh, you know, things happen in, you know, in the woods and, 
and I don't think it's related because I hear, you know, um, for example, um, I live in Peru, okay? And um, there's also stories about things that people see in the, in the Amazon rainforest. So, and there is no military basis in that area. I never actually tried to went in and investigate it because at one time I was talking to a police officer from this in Ayacucho and he told me just to be careful because uh, if me, 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 you, you might have good intentions to find, trying to find some answers for the paranormal, but the problem here over this era, there's a lot of, you know, um, drug trafficking, illegal mining, human trafficking. So if you're going to go to a place asking for a whole bunch of questions, uh, you may get attention from, you know, people that, you know, you don't want to get attention from. But I know for a fact that there is stories about things that, that people see in the, in the Amazon rainforest that they don't explain it. They're not able to explain it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's just uh, this is a very strange world we live in. And uh, there's a lot of weird things that are unexplainable happening within the world. And we're just here trying to document it. And I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your experience here. It was definitely interesting. Thank you so much for offering me because, like I said, for me, it was I was able to talk to somebody else before, but it was kind of like, you know, uh, you keep the thing hidden for so many years. It kind of eats you up. But like I say, it's something that is not every, every day. Every day I think about it, every single day. And I, I think for the fact that there is people like you in, in, in your platforms that, you know, give the opportunity to people to, you know, explain the thing. Because the main thing is you have to understand, you know, you got to you gotta let people know that things out there, you just got to be careful. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it. That's the best thing you can do to help the show grow. Share the show. And if you haven't checked out The Shape of Shadows or Expedition Dogman, what are you waiting for? Go to Merkle.media, hit stream now, and get your stream on with those two films. We have several that we've recorded that have not been released yet. So just trust me when I say there's definitely more coming. You're going to enjoy it as the ride unfolds. And if you haven't checked those out, I suggest starting there. Expedition Dogman and The Shape of Shadows. All right, friends, until next week, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. Man, I'm these